Good morning. Today I would like to go through the basics of setting up a template, a document in Bartender to print cookies with Eddie. I'd like to actually start with the user manual. Um, Y'all think that I have so much knowledge, but got to tell you, I refer to the user manual pretty much on a daily basis to answer um, my own questions and questions on the Eddie page. So let's give it a try. Let's go through the manual and then I will give you some insights along the way on um, how I do it, which is pretty much like the manual. <laughs> so let's go ahead. Um, and where's the manual? Well, it's on the Primera website. So if you type in Primera.com, and then a forward slash, and type in Eddy Downloads. I already have it, must have been there recently. It's going to bring up the Primera page. If you scroll down to the Primera page, it's got all the information when you have your new Eddy for the software for either PC or Mac. The user manual is under Manuals and Documentation, and then the knowledge base articles are also there. I'm not going to cover those in this video, uh, but maybe I'll make a video about those. Fabulous place to get additional information that's not in the user manual. So let's go ahead and click on Eddie User Manual. It's a daunting document, 102 pages, of which we really only care for bartender of about maybe 13 pages. So I don't know that you need to print it out. It's right here whenever you need it. Let's go ahead to page, I believe, let's see, let's look in the, I believe it's page 53, but if we look at the index, Primary Print Hub, so it has sections how to get started, um, print items and the cartridges talks about um, the print primary print hub talks about printing itself um, Printing from a Mac. This is the section. We're going to do printing using bartender But there's also a great section on printing from a Mac and then uh, there's a section on troubleshooting replacing ink filters cleaning the cartridge manual feed mode error messages um, interpreting lights and where to get technical support. So we are going to go to the section on printing, which starts on page 42. So you can even use this little thing at the top and go to 42. It takes you right to that page. It talks about um, any program can be used to print Eddie. Um, it also mentions that in this point, in this section, um, whenever your printer stops printing, and maybe this is a great idea for another video, um, it will print 12 items and then it'll stop. It gives you time to remove the cookies that are printed so that they don't get printed over. Yeah, that's a good video for later. But I'm going to scroll down to page 43 using Bartender. When you buy Eddie, you get a free version of Bartender Ultralight included with Eddie. The thing is, you have to download it from the right place. Um, otherwise, you're getting a trial version that's going to expire without you and require you to pay for it. So there is a download on the Primera page that we were just on for downloading your uh, version of Bartender if you have a, a Windows PC. And right here in the manual, there's also a hyperlink, um, or you could type it in if you like. Um, to get that specific version of the download that Primera pays for so we can have it for free. And everyone has the same code. Uh, the code is actually in the manual. It's, you can see the number Z3TO, etc, etc, etc. That's the number that you need to get the free ultralight version of Bartender, which works fabulously with Eddie. You can use other programs. If you're using other programs, you just follow some guidelines um, in section 4D. We're in section 4, a little bit further down in this manual. So the process is so easy. 
you choose when when you open up bartender it gives you a choice it says in the manual to start a new bartender document that's what we're going to do we're going to start a new bartender document you can from this point open an existing one or um but we're not going to do that we're going to start a new one then you according to the manual you bring up the next print screen and it says select blank template the other option is select template from library we don't want to do that we want this to be easy so choose select blank template and click next next button at the bottom then it's going to have you select your edible ink printer for me i have lots of printers attached um, you might only have this one it's pretty easy just choose edible ink printer and click next then it's going to ask you um, about stock selection you're going to always choose specify custom settings you're never going to choose use a predefined stock and you're going to click next then it's going to ask you for your page size bartender's default is three and a half by three and a half which aligns with the size of the cookies that fit on the carousel if you want something bigger um, then you can set your own size up to 4.72 by 4.72 and this size, page size, should be slightly bigger than your cookie. Not like huge bigger than your cookie, but slightly bigger than your cookie. Um, it allows for some overspray of the design and it helps keep your full design on your cookie. You want to measure your cookie. You don't want to measure the cookie cutter, right? If your cookie has no spread, then if you're measuring the cookie cutter, then your measurement is going to be off. If your cookie has some spread, it's going to be bigger than the cutter, measure the cookie. Simple ruler will do. I've read that some people use calipers to get accuracy, but I don't know about you. My cookies never spread evenly, and they're always off a little bit, so I take my biggest one, and that's what I am set my page size to. Plus, I add about a quarter eighth to a quarter inch all the way around. Now, if you're going to use an adapter or a coaster, to put your cookie on, then you match your size to the size of the adapter coaster. If I'm going to use a coaster that's three and a half inches and my cookie is three inches, I'm going to set my page size to three and a half to match the coaster. And so that's what it's saying here. Um, you can pick three by three, three and a half by three and a half. I find that 95% of my templates, the cookies that I use, I use a three and a half inch template because most of my cookies are three inch then you click next for this next one you can pick either full page media or one or more items per page i choose and you should also one or more items per page one row one column you're going to get one um one particular template of that size and you can see down here in the lower corner the page size is three and a half the templates is three and a half um, I'll say that again your page size and your template size should be the same 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 don't make them different it's just going to cause you printing problems um, at this point I would say that I prob I have done one by one I probably more often use full page media and I can show that to you but let's go with the manual for now because this works also then you're going to choose your label shape um, it says in the manual it should be a circle if you're printing on circular cookies but I like to save time I make every single one of my templates a rectangle that way if I've created a template and I want to print that design on something other than a circle then I already have the template set up as a square so you can do a circle I do a rectangle um, and uh, it'll work either way that says to click next with this method where you're choosing let's see um, one or more items per page the next screen you're going to get is a, a section for margins zero 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 is what you're going to choose when I choose full page media, I don't get that particular screen. Maybe I'll show that in this video if we don't run out of time. 
So you're going to set your margins to zero and click next. You're going to set your columns uh, and rows to one so that you end up with one standard label. They say a label, but you know, that's kind of how it works in this thing. Then you're going to set your template size to be the same as your page size. So if my, my page was three and a half, my template's going to be three and a half. Remember, page and template are the same. Then here's, there are two different options for this. Either way works. Um, I prefer a way that I'm going to show you which isn't this way, but again, either way works. You're going to check the picture box to add a background photo or graphic to your label. And then you're going to click next and then you click finish. In this manual, it says we recommend adding the picture as a background as it automatically crops squares to fit your circles. That can be a little complicated if you want to print out a square later. Um, and this will be a little more restrictive. It will only print the portion within the circle. Now it says if you want more control of your image placement, uncheck this box and use the image tool. That's what I do. I don't check any boxes on this particular page and I set my image using the image tool which is a little icon that has a cactus and a sun on it. That's my preferred method. I think this method in the manual while it works, it's a little more complicated and who needs complication in your life. So um, it's perfectly fine to put the picture here. I have read some um, people's posts where they have a little bit of trouble with this because then they can't control their placement of their image. If you, and uh, if you want more control, kind of like me, I like control, I don't click any of these. If you're going to go the route where you are um, putting your picture in, in the background, then you're going to want to select Embedded Picture and then click the file button to browse to the location. You've got it somewhere saved on your computer. You'll set the size, size method to stretch and you'll the preview will be on the right. Then you're going to click next if you're satisfied with that layout. Otherwise you may want to try one of the other sizing methods. Again, this is more complicated than the next way I'm going to show you, but it works perfectly well if you follow the instructions. Then you're going to finish and that will open your template. So we've gone through what the manual says. Now I'm going to show you how I do it using, sorry, with the scrolling here. Um, in step five, where it says select one or more items per page, I prefer to do full page media. It eliminates a lot of the other choices for me and it gives me more control. So I'm gonna open up Bartender And like the manual says, we're going to start a new bartender document. I'm going to start with a blank template, just like the manual says, and click Next. I'm going to choose my edible ink printer, like the manual says, and I'm going to click Next. I'm going to specif click Specify Custom Settings, just like the manual says, and I'm going to click Next. I'm going to keep it at 3.5 because most of my cookies are 3. But you can see if I wanted to choose other sizes, they're available. If I wanted a custom size, I'm going to choose user defined size and I'm going to type in exactly what I want. Um, but let's go back to three and a half by three and a half because that's primarily what I use. Matches my coaster size. Remember it said in the manual, if you're using coasters, use your coaster size. Keep your orientation to portrait. Um, a little confusing to explain why, but trust me on that one and then go to next. Here's where I choose full page media instead of messing with the one or more items per page. You can do it that way, but you know, who needs more complexity in their life? It works perfectly well, um, but it, as I said earlier, it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility with placement. So I take and do full page media, and I you note know, down here, my page size is the same as my template size, and then I click next. Here's where I click nothing. I could click picture and follow the manual and do it a little more, um, a, a little bit different. But again, like the manual pointed out, you don't have as much flexibility with layout. And I like to have lots of flexibility with layout. So I check none of these boxes. And then I click next. It gives me um, 
a review of what I've chosen, which is basically a blank dark document, printed to Eddie, page size three and a half by three and a half, template size three and a half by three and a half. I'm basically done. And I've, by clicking those other options, I've eliminated a lot of the questions that bartender is going to ask me about setup. And I go ahead and click finish. What I have now is a three and a half by three and a half inch square on which I could use to print a circle or a heart or a square or anything else that's slightly less than three and a half by three and a half. Um, my three inch hearts work fabulously. Here's one of my favorite three inch hearts. And so that would probably print about like that. My circles, my squares, any other odd shapes, everything will fit great on here. <coughs> then, when I want to import my image, remember I mentioned that there was a picture icon, it's a little cactus with a sun. <coughs> Excuse me for my cough. I'm going to insert from file, and I'm going to pick one of my many graphics. Here's one from my other video, a kayak. Now, where you drop your, it's not going to put anything until you actually use your cursor. Um, you press your left mouse key, drag it, unpress your mouse key, and there's your picture. I can move this around wherever I want, but I have to remember that my template is bigger than my cookie. So I don't want my image to come all the way to the end edge because it's going to get cut off. Because remember, my cookie is smaller than my template and my page size. Um, when you move this around, you'll notice some orange dotted lines. I move it up and left. Those are your centering lines. If you want it to be exactly in the middle of the image, then you use that centering. But here's an interesting thing. You can see that there's more white space below this kayak than there is above the kayak. So if I'm using the centering, um, either on this left-hand side to center horizontally, or this on the left-hand side to center vertically, it's centering the image, but the image is not centered in this box. So be a little careful. Um, Eddie may be, or uh, the, print, the print hub may, sorry, bartender might be telling me it's even, but if I look here, I've got three quarters of an inch below the graphic, and I have only a half an inch above the graphic. So if I'm making this in the middle of the page according to the guidelines, my graphic is not visually in the middle of the, gra of the thing because of the white space above and below. How do you fix that? Well, you can visually just move it down until it's in the middle, or I could crop part of the white space off and get it closer to what I want. Um, and I can do that. I do that in Paint 3D. If I'm going to go to my downloads, let's see if I can find this one, and I double click it and open it up in Paint 3D. I can crop this so that it comes with even margins all around. And now when I save this, and instead I delete this one and bring in the other one, I can find it. Let's see. Here's where I don't remember where I just, I think it is under downloads. Sorry about that. Oh, user error. I can't remember where I put it. There she is. You can see now that 
my white space around the graphic is minimized and now if I place her centered she's actually more centered in the picture although visually I might want to move her up a little there we go so now she's more centered and so you just want to keep in mind the white space around your graphic all right so here's another tip and trick um, I have a square template and remember I said I have a round cookie so I take this shape thing up here see there's a little shape thing I'm gonna give myself a template within my template I'm gonna choose the circle and I'm going to over on the left hand side here I'm gonna make myself a circle and I'm gonna look down on the bottom until it tells me that this is a three inch circle I can either drag it until it turns into three inch or I can actually click on this bar here and it will let me type in Unclick the lock aspect. It'll let me type in three by three. So I have an exact circle. Say close. This is my circle. This circle is not going to print unless I leave it over here on the template. Now I can move it over and center it. See the dotted lines? I go like this, move it around. I wait till I get it centered. And now I have a visual on where the center circle will be if I place my cookie directly in the center of the coaster. And from here, I can move her around a little bit and make her look better on the cookie. Maybe I want her up, maybe I want her down, but I may end up placing her where she's not, the graphic is not centered, but it looks better on my cookie. Then before I print, I take this circle and move it off to the side. And now I'm going to print on a three and a half inch coaster with a three inch cookie. The cookie will be exactly centered on the coaster and she should, she should end up in the middle, visually where I wanted her, because I can use this guideline to show where she is. All right, I think that's enough for now. Um, just wanted to show you that the manual is a fabulous place to get started. It is a fabulous place to get started, and there's no reason why you have to do it exactly like that because there are a few options um, but it really is good to use the manual as a guideline so hopefully this video is helpful um, if you have any questions obviously put them in the comments and I'll see if I can help you and there's lots of other folks that will be able to offer some great comments all right thanks for listening